Now let's consider the whippet's neck and body. The neck is long, clean, and muscular. It is well arched with no sign of throatiness and widens gracefully into the shoulders. A U-neck with its concave shape is incorrect and should be penalized, as should a thin neck lacking proper muscle or a short, thick neck. This correct neck is well arched, long, clean, and muscular. It blends gracefully into the shoulders, which are characterized by long, well laid back shoulder blades. The muscling of the shoulders is flat. There should be moderate space between the blades at the withers. The upper arm should be the same length as the shoulder blade and is placed such that the elbow falls directly under the withers. These straight shoulders and straight upper arms are incorrect and should be strictly penalized, as should a heavily muscled or loaded shoulder. These faults will inhibit low, free movement. These correct shoulders are long and well laid back with proper length of upper arm and flat, clean muscling. The brisket is very deep, reaching as nearly as possible to the point of the elbow. The forelegs are straight and give the appearance of strength and substance of bone. The pasterns are strong, slightly bent, and flexible Weak or upright pasterns should be strictly penalized. The forefeet are well formed with hard, thick pads. They are more hare foot shaped than cat foot shaped, although both are acceptable. The toes should be long, close, and well arched with the nails naturally short or of moderate length. Dew claws may be removed. From the front, good depth of chest should be evident. The brisket should reach as nearly as possible to the elbow. The space between the front legs should be well filled in so that there is no appearance of a hollow. Bowed legs, tied in elbows, legs lacking substance, legs set far under the body so as to create an exaggerated forechest should be strictly penalized. This dog lacks fill in front, and there is an appearance of a hollow. This dog displays good depth of chest. Note again the clean, flat muscling of the shoulders and upper arms, with the elbows held straight to the body, turning neither in nor out. The whippet's body has a broad, firm, well-muscled back. There should be good length over the loin. The back line runs smoothly from the withers and has a graceful natural arch over the loin and croup. This curve should be continuous without either flatness or excessive arch. The highest point of the curve is over the loin, not the rib cage. What about this dog's back line? The arch is too accentuated, giving a wheel-backed appearance. While the arch should be continuous, it should appear natural and graceful, never exaggerated. This top line, which drops off too steeply over the loin and croup, is also incorrect. This back line is correct, running smoothly from the withers with a graceful natural arch over the loin and croup. The brisket is very deep, reaching as nearly as possible to the elbow, and there is a definite tuck-up of the underline. Note the long and well-sprung rib cage, extending well back, allowing plenty of room for heart and lung function without causing the dog to appear barrel-chested. 
The tail is a continuation of the graceful line from the loin and croup. It is long and tapering, falling in a long, gentle curve. The tail should reach to the hip bone when drawn through between the hind legs. It is carried below the level of the back at all times. The hindquarters are long and powerful with broad, muscular thighs and second thighs, and well-bent broad stifles. The muscling should be long and flat, and carried well down toward the hocks. The hocks are short, well let down, and perpendicular to the ground when the dog is standing. These hindquarters are over-angulated. The hips are low in relationship to the withers. The loin is too short, and the croup is steep. From the rear, the powerful muscling should be evident, along with the good breadth of upper and lower thighs. The hocks should be parallel, turning neither in nor out. Sickle hocks, or cow hocks, should be strictly penalized. Rear feet, like the front feet, are well formed with hard, thick pads. Dew claws may be removed. Remember that flat or splayed feet, or soft feet, lacking thick, hard pads on either front or rear feet, should be severely penalized. The whippet is an animal of graceful and continuous curves. The visual top line begins at the back of the skull and falls in a series of descending curves to the back of the back foot. Any awkwardness of line impeding the progress of the eye along the animal pinpoints a fault. The slightly arched neck flows gracefully into the withers and the withers blend into the brief flatness of the back before the line rises slightly over the muscular loin. This creates the top of the curve that is reciprocated by the curve of the brisket below. The curve eases to form a croup of about a 30 degree angle to the ground. The tail continues to lead the eye into the complementary angles of stifle and hock.